Hello everyone. My name is Jianyuan Wang, and I am a joint PhD student at the Oxford Visual Geometry Group at Meta AI. Thanks for the great opportunity to present our work, Visual Geometry Grounded Transformer. Reconstruction is central to 3D geometry and has been a key research problem for over 50 years. It aims to recover a point cloud and camera poses from several unconstrained images. Past reconstruction methods often rely on FaceTime optimization. For example, the classical framework CallMap uses iterative bound adjustment. It gradually registers images into an optimization problem. Once a new image is registered, bound adjustment will be conducted once. We also have a recent deep framework, Duster. It uses optimization called global alignment. The input for Duster is a pair of images and the output is pixel-aligned 3D points. When you have several frames, it checks all possible pairs, and then use global alignment to merge the pairwise predictions into a final 3D result. However, optimization is far away from seamless, and it is the bottleneck for 3D vision in the decade of deep learning. First, optimization is often very time consuming, which takes tens of seconds or minutes. Next, optimization is poorly compatible with deep learning. It cannot work as a plug and play component and is usually not differentiable. Finally, Optimization often relies on complex engineering designs. For non-experts, it's hard to debug, and frankly, it is quite scary. So, we should build a framework to reconstruct in one go. Given a set of images, we want to use a neural network, just a neural network, to recover the 3D point cloud along with the corresponding camera parameters, per-frame depths, and 2D correspondences. Basically, we hope people don't have to be Andrew Zisman to conduct 3D reconstruction. Therefore, we introduce VGG Transformer. Given multiple frames, we first use Dino to patch by each image into tokens. We then use a camera token to aggregate camera information. All tokens are concatenated and passed into an alternating attention module, which switches between global self-attention and frame-wise self-attention layers. Finally, we use a small transformer to decode the camera tokens into camera parameters, and a DPT head to convert the image tokens into dense outputs such as depth maps. The most non-standard component in our framework is the alternating attention design. Why do we need it? Global attention is straightforward. It keeps that the outputs remain consistent across multiple frames. But why do we need frame-wise attention? Most importantly, it helps us avoid frame index embedding. We do not want to explicitly input frame index to the network because we hope to keep permutation equivalence and allow flexible input lengths. To be specific, if we use frame index as embedding, changing the order of the input images will affect the reconstruction result. This is not ideal. For example, when moving around a building from left to right or right to left, the building's structure should remain the same. 
So our model should be older invariant while using frame index as embedding. It is not this case. Next, during testing, we hope the model can handle a flexible number of input frames. It means, definitely, the model will see some frame index embedding not shown during training. Therefore, we use frame-wise attention, allowing the model to naturally learn per-frame feature clustering, so that the model knows which tokens come from which frame without relying on explicit frame index. This is our overall framework. Just a neural network. Great, and let's see some results now. Our model can handle out-of-domain test examples very well, including repeated structures, such as SAM. During training, the model was only trained for at most 24 frames, but it can generalize to 64 frames, 128 frames, or more during testing. For example, here is an example for 128 frames. Furthermore, it can even handle non-overlap two-frame input and provides a reasonable reconstruction. Quantitatively, VGGT is accurate. Previous optimization-based methods have achieved great results in camera pose estimation. Some concurrent deep works in CVPI-25, they also show good results. While with VGG transformer, just by a fit photo run, we have achieved much better results than all of these methods. VGG transformer is also fast. Compared to optimization-based ones, we are around 50 times faster, such as 10 seconds versus 0.2 seconds. Compared to concurrent works in CVPR 2025, VGG transformer matches the fastest speed while maintaining a clear advantage in accuracy. Our model is powerful, and it can handle more 3D tasks. For example, it achieves the SOTA results on point cloud estimation and 2D correspondence matching. We also evaluate VGG Transformer's zero-shot generalization ability to new settings, as well as its ability to boost downstream tasks through simple fine-tuning. For example, even out of our own expectation, we noticed that VGG Transformer is as good as SOTA molecular depth estimation methods, such as depth sentencing V2. Although VGG Transformer is never trained for single view task. Here are some visualizations. We just directly fit a monocular image to the network, and do not need to duplicate the image into a pair. Furthermore, to illustrate the power of VGG Transformer, we use its feature backbone for downstream tasks with simple fine-tuning. On dynamic point tracking, Although the input is highly non-rigid, our backbone enhances co-tracker to SOTA. On low-view synthesis, we show that even without ground truth cameras as input, a low-view synthesis model can lead to competitive quality to those with ground truth cameras. Additionally, the model is fast and efficient. For example, with 10 input frames, VGG transformer only needs around 0.2 seconds 
and 4 gigabits GPU memory. The memory grows almost linearly to the number of input frames, although the speed is around 0.1.5. Overall, VGG Transformer is general, seamless, and practical. It handles diverse input domains and a variable number of input views with ease. It is just a feed-forward neural network without the need for optimization. It also predicts all core 3D properties in seconds. Fast, efficient, and usable. So, is it a full replacement for structure from motion? We believe not, at least not yet. For example, bond adjustment can still slightly boost the performance of VGG transformer. And for very light scene reconstruction, optimization is still necessary, such as the scenario of building ROM in a day from 2 million images. But we believe that data-driven 3D vision is only just beginning. As Sutton said, general approach to the leverage computation will finally prove to be the most effective. This is called the bitter lesson, but probably it can also be a better lesson, one that the whole 3D community can learn from. So, let's move forward. 2D vision and NLP have already shown the power of scalable data-driven learning. Let's catch up. Thanks for listening.